You are not in Kansas anymore. You are on Pandora, ladies and gentlemen. Respect that fact every second of every day. If there is a hell, you might want to go there for some R&R &R after a tour on Pandora. You've got to obey the rules. Pandora rules. Welcome to Pandora's Box, everyone. We are here with you once again. So, let's get right into it. Crocodiles. They're pretty cool, aren't they? I like crocodiles. Strongest bite force of any creature alive currently. Mm -hmm. The death grip. Yeah, man. I'm pretty sure the strongest bite force, we listened to it pretty recently, didn't we, of any mm. creature ever was the, the Megalodon, of course, the largest shark that we know of that ever mm -hmm. existed. Um, and I think the largest, uh, the, sorry, the strongest bite force of any land animal ever was the Tyrannosaurus Rex mm. that we know of. But yeah, crocodile's pretty cool. Um, obviously, the bane of many a waterhole in That's places right. like Australia. And I must bet your brother and Abby are pretty cautious going there. Yeah, like, especially like, now since... they've moved over to like Cairns. Oh yeah, is that so, more um, crocky? It's more crocky. Is it way more crocky. They can't go swimming, that's for sure. Is it like Crocodile Dundee country? I reckon so. Bo bogan country, as mm -hmm. they call it. Do you know what a bogan is? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bogan's yeah. like sort of like, you know how like, in Britain we have almost like chavs? Mm. A bogan is almost like the Australian equivalent, I guess, except for rather than because of the differences in, in our countries, obviously, like chavs are sort of like road men, aren't they? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like sort of like, have like bum bags and wear like <laughs> ma matching tracksuits and yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, Just yeah, like, yeah. what's wrong, mate? And what's stuff wrong like that. Whereas like bogans <laughs> are like, um, think of like a really unclassy version of like Crocodile Dundee. Uh -huh. You know, like corkscrew Good hats. Sheila. Like never wear sh like shirts, uh -huh. always dirty, but with like sort of like snake skin like like vests. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, you know, like, I'm um, sorry, like waistcoats, like over like their bare chests and mm -hmm. that and then just... Like like crocodile necklaces and just like you know missing teeth and yeah, stuff, just yeah, bogans. Yeah. It's a pretty funny term, <laughs> isn't it? But um, yeah, crocodiles pretty savage. Obviously, can grow you know up to just over twenty feet in length. Some mm. of the some of the really big sort of salties and, and Nile crocodiles are growing that big. Obviously, they have to be because especially like you know in in Africa, Nile crocodiles take down absolutely massive prey. Think of all, like, the megafauna in, in Africa, you know, attack massive, massive creatures, even go for things like, you know, lions, wildebeest, mm. you know, all sorts of stuff. But, you know, baby hippos. But um, I guess one good thing about crocodiles is the fact that, you know, we think, you know, oh, you know, as long as you're not in the water, you're okay. Mm -hmm. But did you know that there used to be a terrifying type of terrestrial crocodile called a, a caprosuchus? I did not. Yeah, man. Yeah. That sounds terrifying. Terrifying um, uh, terrestrial crocodiles. So they looked basically the same as crocodiles today. Mm. I can get it up. I was going to say, here. yeah, you could grab up for a everyone. Photo. Yeah, if you're listening on the radio, by the way, we can get up some pictures. Um, if you listen, if you watch and listen on either YouTube or Spotify, we'll get up mm -hmm. some pictures of the things we're talking about. Um, I got. Got to say, I'm loving. I'm loving how quickly we're into it today as well. Yeah, no messing about. No man. messing around. Straight to the cracks. straight to the crazy stuff, man. Sometimes you just got to not mess about, and mm -hmm. you. Hey? Yeah, so here we got. So basically, oh, man, basically that looks even crazier than I thought it was going to look. Look pretty similar to like Monde Crocs, but just with really yeah. long arms and legs. Oh, the spikes on its head makes it look even more like. And they evil. could run. They could run really fast, man. Uh oh. They could run really. <laughs> so this is almost like pretty terrifying in a way, isn't it? Because I guess like you think, yeah, you know, obviously in the water you're in the crocs like habitat, mm. you're in their domain. So you think like you know. Obviously, just don't go in, like, you know, there's, like, rivers, isn't there, and lakes and stuff in Australia. You see, there's, like, signs yeah. for it. You see all the time, and it's basically, it's just, like, don't come in the water here, cross yeah. sighted. Don't play with your feet. But imagine this one. Like, literally, you could be in the water, get out of the water, and it's just going to come out and mm. just just keep on... Be sunbathing. Yeah, it's just going to keep on chasing you, man. Man. So, yeah, these are Capra, Capra Sucus. Um, could grow to lengths, apparently, of six metres. Damn. That's pretty darn big. That's pretty big. Considering well, how tall is two metres, that's like... Six foot five, I think. Yeah, Something yeah. Something about that, six, six fives. Six Man, five, six, six. six metres is a big animal. A yeah. A big, big that's animal. That's like pretty much as big as like the upper limit of like mm. salties and Nile crocodiles today. So like just under 20 feet, say. Mm. That's a massive animal. That's enough to make even a very large man look very small. <laughs> yeah, Do you know what definitely. I mean? But like, yeah, apparently, how, how fast do you reckon they could run? Oh, I reckon... 25 miles an hour. That's about right. That's yeah. about right. Four, nice. It says here 40 kilometers per hour. So mm. let me just find out exactly how much that is in miles per hour. Because um, although, I know, although I know that like Americans, I think, seem to think that we do, we don't actually work in kilometers per hour no, in the UK. No. We're a bit of a weird country in that regard. Like we don't, 
we sort of mix imperial and mm. metric. Whereas mm. like America are like a strictly metric. Like they use like inches, feet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Stuff like that. But um, and obviously the rest like Europe is like strictly metric, so they use like centimeters. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, kilometers per hour. Whereas we sort of mix everything. Don't yeah. We? Do you know the one that I'm very glad we do use? What's that? Is Celsius. Yeah, I think yeah. Celsius is so much. It makes so much more sense. It than seems Fahrenheit. like it's nice and tidy, isn't it? Like, well, zero is freezing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? hundred like, is boiling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So forty kilometers per hour is yeah twenty four point eight five miles per hour. Mm. So you've pretty much nailed it on the head there, Bullwinkle. Look at that. But See, that's fast, man. That is quick. How quick? You saying Bolt? What was that? Like Eighteen. I think faster than that. I think I think he's faster than that. Right. Um, let's have a look. But even so, I'm pretty sure it could still run, outrun Usain Bolt. Mm. Usain Bolt top speed. Let's find out for you folks. Usain Bolt top speed. Um, what's he What's he been clocked at? Uh, oh. Damn. It might be more useful to think of it in terms of kilometers per hour or miles per hour. 23. 23.3. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I thought That's it was quick, was, you know. It's really quick, but it's <laughs> still not quite as fast mm. as Capri Zucca. So you think, even the fastest man on the planet literally the world record holder mm-hmm. for sprints um c- still not outrun a caprasuka so and us- i bet that could run a lot further than 100 meters oh, yeah. at that speed yeah, as well yeah, yeah i bet it had yeah i bet it had some of those like slow twitch muscle fibers mm-hmm. as well as the fast twitch muscle fibers you know to make sure it can keep going for long periods of time mm-hmm. but yeah that's a sketchy animal isn't it mm. it's almost yeah, like you know evil. when like, you, it's almost like when you like you theorize don't you like are like Anything like that, like sharks and crocs, you think, yeah, man, that's sketchy. Like, imagine if they just learned how to walk on land. It's like, <laughs> mate, there actually was one of these that could just, yeah, yeah, that could yeah. just full on run twenty five miles an hour on land, like just galloping at you like a freaking horse or something. But with like an eighteen foot long croc that could just with just long arms and legs just caning it at you. And you know, there's something about reptiles. I always think like. Uh, as opposed cold, to other animals, cold there's blooded. no you can tell all in all this in their brain is like I need to kill to I need to survive. Well, that's, that's what we. It. I mean, in sort of like you know human slang, isn't it? Like if mm. we say like somebody's cold blooded or something's mm. cold blooded, we mean it as like a way of showing that there's like no emotion, like no no no, no getting through to them. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing in their brain that's gonna think like, oh, I'll leave them alone now, mm. or, or I, I won't. I don't want to hurt them or mm. anything like that. Like you know, and you you can even see it in like animals, like you know, like you know, dogs and even like really mm. ferocious, massive predators like bears. Sometimes I think on, on occasion you'll see like, you know, like they're probably, sometimes they do want to eat you, don't get me wrong. Mm. But a lot of the time it's more to like, cause they're worried about their cubs or something. Yeah. yeah Whereas yeah. with things like crocs and snakes, it's like, nope. Yeah. It's like, they know exactly what you are and they are just trying to kill you to eat you mm-hmm. flat out. And there's no like thought process. There's yeah, no like, there's should no, I, yeah, shouldn't yeah, I? Yeah. It's very simple. It's like, if you're close enough and they can do it, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. Something yeah, 100%. Like, and there's something quite menacing about that, isn't mm. it? It's like a human. It's, n- it's weird because it's not even like necessarily an evil way because it's not like no, it's, it's personal just, or anything. It's just normal, way. isn't it? But it's, it's just, just like, yeah. it's it's quite daunting in a way, mm. isn't it? But yeah, very cool. Yeah, I always say that, don't I? I mean, we've talked about, we've um, sort of talked before, well, a lot about nature on Pandora's box before, mm. but one of the things we've said, it's like, um, I think as humans, we've, we're, I think one of the small issues I would say in general with modern society is that I'd say... Um, especially in a country like the UK, and you see it also mm. in like the US, um, lots of countries in Europe, and also places like you know, you know, Canada or Australia, places like that. Is I think we've just grown a little bit too sensitive, so we we almost like try and look at everything through the eyes of like emotion and safety. Yeah, yeah. So you know, and I think it's it's you know we've talked about before. You know, when I've said like you know, at the end of the day, if you like, if you accidentally, walk, if you're walking through the forest, some mm. some sort of nature reserve, wherever in the world. So, like in the UK, for example, and um, you're walking really slowly for whatever reason, not deliberately, but just, mm. you know, whatever. And you sort of walked around the corner of like a tree or a bush and you like startled a big stag mm. and it like freaked it out. And it's just instinct was just to like do like a back kick, which is like obviously mm. what they do. And it just like basically broke your skull, like mm-hmm. fractured your skull. And you just died on the spot there from like internal bleeding in like a matter of minutes. Like, it wouldn't care. Yeah. yeah there yeah, would be yeah, yeah. zero thought process behind it. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't even really, it wouldn't have the capacity to, to even think about yeah. what had just happened. Mm-hmm. It would just be like, instinct kicks in, it's startled. Is this a predator? Who knows? Who knows? Kick it. Naturally, <laughs> back kick. It's a bit like, you know, when like, you, you know, you see lots of videos online and stuff. And I, I've, I've literally, funnily enough, I've done it to your brother before. Right. Um, you know, so when when people get like, uh, like jumping people, their mate are trying to like, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and like, there's two reactions: either someone like jumps, or sometimes the instinct is just to like hit. Uh huh. Do you know what I mean? And that like, fight or flight. 
Yeah, and I once literally like floored your brother because he like jumped out on me. <laughs> <laughs> it was at my house, and I can't remember what we were doing, but he just like disappeared for ages. Right, and um, I was like looking around my house for him, and I went up to my room, and he was like hiding behind my door, and he like and he like jumped out, uh, and he was like, and, like that. Oh and I just literally God. I just like decked him, <laughs> and he was just on the floor like, oh. And it was oh like really, but you God. see, there's like a there's a video I can think of in particular, and it's like uh, like a, an American high school, I think. Mm. And there's like a somebody like jumps out of like a bin with like a mask, and you see uh-huh. that, and that black dude just decks it, and the yeah, guy just yeah, yeah, really yeah. comically falls back into the <laughs> bin, and the lid like falls back over, and it's like super comical. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's like it's like that, isn't it? But when, when you've got an animal as big as like a stag with like solid hooves, mm. and they're kicking you in the freaking skull. Mm. As I said, you're probably going to have serious, serious um, brain damage, if not die. And to that deer, it's there's no like, oh, I feel bad about that. No, oh, I no, should, no. shouldn't have done that. Is it, two minutes later, it's moved on. It's probably eating some grass or something. Literally to greener pastures. Yeah. Just chewing some grass or some berries or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's just, that's just nature, unfortunately. Mm. A little bit as well. And even though it does, you know, even though it does almost like seem like a, a shame in a way, the same way that like... You know, obviously nobody means to do it, or at least most people don't, unless you're a weirdo. Mm. But let's face it, man, we must all like step on insects like yeah, almost yeah, daily yeah, yeah. without realising it. Do you know what I mean? And stuff. And it's mm-hmm. like, unfortunately, it just sort of happens. But yeah. I think because we've become such a, it, it, I think it's a side effect in in a way. It's, it's a it's a side effect um, from the, the 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 positivity of the West. I think in a lot of ways, like these West of our Western countries, because in a way, it's like we've built up such a comfortable. And mm. luxurious society that um, we're allowed to worry. Yeah, about we're these allowed things. to worry about these mm. things. Whereas in a lot of countries, um, like you, you can't, can you? And I think it makes me think as well. Actually, I was watching something. It was just really in depth analysis on on climate change the other day, mm-hmm. um, and it wasn't um, it wasn't it wasn't at all political. Do you know what I mean? It was like purely like Facts. factual mm-hmm. and it was saying some really interesting things actually and i thought I'd sort of put it into context and it reminds me of this conversation we're having right now mm. so it was saying like the the countries that are most concerned about climate con- change are countries like the uk right you know the us france or, you know p- countries like that mm-hmm. um also i think you know like china i think from what i, I, say, I, I think like really i'm pretty sure china i'm pretty sure china like actually got really progressive mm. policies for for, for the, um climate change fair play to because i think they used to be like one of the worst and mm. now they've like completely flipped the yeah. flipped the script flipped and now the they're lit. like actually yeah, a really yeah. good country for it yeah but i've heard the worst countries like by far are like the poor south american countries right and also like india mm. and apparently they are responsible for like almost like the majority of the world's like like pollution essentially mm. you know like what's causing climate change anyway you know yeah yeah um and uh apparently e- they were saying like this is how little impact you, the UK has on climate change. They were saying, like, literally, in, regardless of what the UK did or didn't do, it would mm. only affect the, the the world by, like, 2%. So they were saying, so, like, even if, like, the UK <laughs> did, like, an Atlantis tomorrow and just, like, got, like, swallowed mm. by the ocean, it, like, basically it wouldn't affect anything. And I just thought that was an interesting um, thing to think about in a way, um, just purely because of the things we were saying about, like, crocodiles and deers in terms of the fact that, like, like we can worry about these things, do you know what I mean? From from our sort of from our viewpoint, mm. because of the way that our countries are set up mm. and the way our lives are set up. But if you're living in some like slum in South America, or you're living in some like disease ridden part of India or something, mm. you're probably so poor and you're so just like looking for your next meal and that. Mm. The idea probably that like some rich British person or rich American person is almost going to come to you and like lecture you about climate change. You're yeah. probably like, man, we're just trying to live day to bigger problems. Literally, I'm just trying to like make sure that my like my like son or daughter has like food tomorrow. Mm. Like, you know, so like sod off, like go back in your private jet to whichever country you come from. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit like it's, it's a bit like what we're saying. There's almost like that sensitivity thing. Like we're very sensitive about these things. But like the same way that some animals don't. You know, they don't have the luxury and they don't even have, like, the thought process of, mm. of thinking about the, the brutal things they're doing. Also, it reminded me a bit about those countries, you know, like, yeah, like some parts of India and some parts of South America. They don't, they don't have the luxury, man, to worry about climate change. And mm. that might sound like a mental thing to say, and that might almost sound a bit triggering to some people, but mm. they really just don't. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like... It, 
they, they don't have the time to be going on like uh on like protests in no, Trafalgar no, no. Square and Washington DC and all these things. You know what I mean? It's That's like, why I almost find it like I find it almost comical with like for example a, a big reason that a lot of people turn to like veganism. Uh, mm. is due to them wanting to have less of an impact mm. on climate change in the world, which I suppose in theory is a good idea. In theory. But in, yeah. in reality, it's well it makes no difference. No, I don't. Like, I don't someone I really buying don't think a steak does, no. at the supermarket, yeah. if you don't buy it, it's still there. And I almost yeah, find that a yeah. comical reason for people to like not eat meat, because it's like, yeah. realistically... I mean, I, I, that decision that, makes no difference. I, I do agree with that point. And I think, you know, like, um, and I know, obviously I know what the, the, the backlash to that would be mm. is um, like a vegan would say, yeah, but if, if nobody ate yeah, it, then yeah, there'd be yeah, zero sure. demand and then they would stop doing it. But the fact of the matter is, is I think to imagine that there would ever be zero demand mm. in itself is, is not misguided. Realistic it's not all. realistic. Yeah. So um, if anything, yeah, it's just encouraging animal waste. And let's say um, even theoretically, if if everyone did stop eating mm. meat, and then we went, f everyone went full vegan. It seems to me like from all the latest research, it seems to be coming out. It doesn't really seem to. It's That's it's either I mean. it's either I not can't imagine make that much it's either of a not as ethical or it's better like zero point five percent more ethical because of the amount of. Um, Things like the Amazon that's cut down. Mm -hmm. Like the Amazon is like the largest rainforest on the planet. Mm. So that's obviously what's pumping out the majority of like um, oxygen mm. and stuff like that in, in, into like um, our atmosphere. That's being cut down a lot of the time. It's, it's, it's being cut down to plant essentially the sort of things that feed vegans. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all like, you know, <clears throat> things like palm oil. It's really uneconomically friendly. Um, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think avocado is real tasty, but avocados... Mm. Um, you mean the amount of avocado plantations and even things like crops, you know, I'm just talking straightforward for crops. Mm. They were saying, um, I remember like hearing this um, sort of in-depth thing and they were saying, and anybody that grew up in a rural area can can picture this. You know, like when you see like the, the tractors and they're like reaping the, the, yeah, the fields yeah. and the harvest stuff and you always see all the, the seagulls and the birds and they're like flocking everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's because obviously there's a ridiculously large amount of like ground dwelling like um, animals that um, are living in these fields. Mm. And when the tractors come through to like collect all the wheat and, and the mm. corn and everything like that, they're basically just churning up all these animals. Yeah. And they were saying that literally- putting on, Literally putting them on a plate. In like one <laughs> field, in like one field, the amount of like birds and like rabbits and other like little like rodents and mm. things like that you're like killing is um is almost like m mind boggling, and that's what all the birds that mm. you see flying around. That's what they're coming down. They're I was coming. Say, I've they're never coming, even thought of that, but that makes yeah, sense. They're they're coming to pick up the scraps mm. of all the bits of flesh that have been churned up mm. by the combine harvesters and everything like that. That's what they're coming yeah. for. Because it's basically they've just been there's mince meat. That's that basically there's basically mince meat all mixed up in the mud, mm -hmm. and not just that as well. I mean. Let's think about all, it's not even just like the meaty animals. Let's think of all the invertebrates. Like, there's a lot mm. of really cool insects and beetles. Like, I don't know what it is about beetles, but I've always found beetles fascinating. Yeah. I really like them. Oh, I like, cool. It might sound like a funny thing to say. I like beetles. <laughs> I like beetles. Do you know what I mean? But I find them really interesting. One cool, of my favorite cool. things about, um, you know, up where we live, the Quantox is very local to us mm. in Somerset. And um, one of my favorite things about hiking on the Quantox is. Is um, once you get off the beaten path a little bit, you can find some really cool beetles, man. Right, like, cool. I'm talking like really big, big interesting yeah, beetles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I've posted some of the ones I found on my Instagram before, and like found out the um, you know, like the 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 Latin name for them right, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, really interesting stuff. Yeah, they've got mm -hmm. some beautiful colors. You know, almost like, like you think of almost like, like petrol. You know when you see like petrol in a puddle, yeah, yeah, and there's yeah, like, 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 like purple blues, yellows, yeah, purples, yeah, yeah. reds, and it's just like this beautiful sheen. Like some of them have that sort of sheen to them. Mm. It's like a really beautiful thing. But yeah, even animals like that, like some of these beetles and stuff, are like, you know, they're not doing great in mm. terms of like population size and stuff like that. And so the the fact that these all these like in fascinating, interesting beetles are just getting like churned up as well mm. in all these fields because obviously the fields are perfect habitat mm. for all these animals. Whether it is things like beetles or ground nesting birds or you know um, rodents or, yeah, or, yeah. or bunny rabbits or whatever it is. And I remember also hearing another thing, and it was it was it was about a guy. It was about a guy. And by the way, this isn't at all to like you know not veganism. At the end mm. of the day, I'm very like live and let live. So I think if mm. if that's what you've decided to do ethically. And that's what you think is best. Then good on you, and I, I mean agree. that. And I mean that genuinely. Um, but um, you know, because at the end of the day, we can all only do what we think is right. Mm. And if that's what somebody thinks, then I think 
And and for for all the information that's placed before them, if that's what they still think is right, then fair play. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's also fair play that if if somebody didn't agree with that, mm. you know, you know, that's just that's the way that democracy works. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I remember reading this thing about a guy who decided to to go live off grid. Right. It's basically like he used to be like an accountant or something like that, and he was okay, just like, and just dropped. It he all. was just fed up. Cool. Had like almost like a bit of like a midlife crisis sort of thing. Was just like fed up. Was like, man, I hate cities. I'm stressed all the time. Um, and just, yeah, just need a complete change of lifestyle. So we went off grid. I feel like everyone can relate to that a bit. Oh man, 100%. I almost the, think it's the like, want oh. to just go go out and live in like a lodge somewhere. Man, I think that stuff like that on like a weekly basis, mm. man. But um, yeah, uh, it, he was vegan at the time and he went to live off grid and he basically decided that he would become vegetarian at first. Right. Because it was, as you can imagine, when you're in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm. off grid, it's super hard because, you know, he was obviously not going to supermarkets or anything like that. He had to grow yeah, yeah, his yeah. own food. And it's like he had obviously – it takes a while to, like, build up a small farming community and to get mm-hmm. veggies growing and stuff. And even once you have that established for, like, one household, mm. it's quite hard to have enough to supply you with enough food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and let's face it as well because you're burning a lot more calories day to day as well because, you know, where he was living, you know, he had to completely maintain his own household. He mm-hmm. was walking miles and miles every day. You know, chopping wood, gathering wood, all this stuff. It's a lot of work, a lot of burning fuel. Oh, a hell of a lot of burning fuel, and you need to make sure you're bringing that in. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, basically, I think after 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 a little, while, so like he had like chickens and stuff. And at first, he was like, uh, "Oh, do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna reintroduce very small animals into right. my diet." And obviously, with the theory being, it's, it's, <laughs> that's a funny start. It's, it's it's a it's a common thing to it's it's a weird thing that like humans think like this, isn't it? In a mm. way, but it, it, it's so true. It's a little bit. It's a little bit. It reminds me of a little bit before I go into it of like um like the almost like human centered you think either the more is better or the less is better yeah, depending yeah, yeah. on the situation. So you see like people often like they end up overtraining and they don't get anywhere because they're. They think, oh, if I, I'll just train more and more and more. Whereas mm-hmm. actually, it's almost like a balancing act. You have to be smart about it. And I think with things like this, it was like you know, thinking less is less is more. Yeah. But um, so apparently, at first, he thought, right, well, I've heard that that frogs taste like chicken. Okay. So he was like, at first, he would he would kill like a couple of frogs couple a day. Of frogs legs. But the thing is, obviously, well, after he killed like the first frog, Got you know, he he, <laughs> he he would cook it and then he would eat it, and he'd realize it would be like three or four mouthfuls. And then he started thinking to himself, so he would ki- so he would kill more frogs. Mm. And then what he started finding was was that it was hard to find frogs in this local area because he was killing so many frogs. Mm. So then he started thinking, oh man, I'm having to kill so many frogs to keep up with like my calorie intake, and it's almost like not worth killing them and 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 uh, you know and and cooking them and all this mm. this stuff. Um, like I can even tell on like a small stage and you know of like the sort of yeah. mile radius from my little lo- lodge I've I've um, built. That the, the the frog population is going down. So mm. he's like, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna start eating some of my chickens right. every now and again. So he upscaled, obviously an animal now, which is about ten times bigger, maybe mm-hmm. a bit more than a frog. So he started eating a chicken. But then you think, you know, a chicken out in the in the cabin stuff would last him like a couple of days. Mm-hmm. And then he just was like, Okay, well now I have to kill another chicken. Mm. And then that so he thought, okay, so that's that's unsustainable. So then he started going up. And then but basically within within the course of like a year, mm. um, He'd gone back to civilization, purchased himself a rifle, and he was hunting like big deer mm. and stuff in the forest. Because what basically what he decided was he he was morally and ethically mm. more comfortable with killing one problem stag, as they call them, like an old stag or mm-hmm. or an injured stag or a troublesome stag that's killing other stags, um, and that would stag would last him months. Mm. Because from a stag that's like freaking four times the size of me, that's mm. a lot of meat. Uh, compared to a frog yeah. that he was starting yeah. off on. So, you know, you could kill one one big stag. It's not going to affect the population of stags at all because you could get away with killing yeah. like three or four stags a year, mm-hmm. which is nothing. Mm-hmm. And if especially if you're, if you're going about it ethically and you're going for the right ones, as we've talked about on, on the past in the past in Pandora's Box 4, you're actually doing sort of like the stag population mm. a favour um, you know, helping like new younger stags coming up and being able to mate with the females rather than just the old, the mm-hmm. same old stags, which could cause you know inbreeding and disease stuff like that, um, which definitely happens. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's like you're actually sort of doing a favour for the ecosystem, and you're only killing three or four animals a year rather than killing hundreds and mm. hundreds and hundreds of animals a year. Um, so, but I thought it was a really interesting um, read. 
And I also thought it made perfect sense to me. Yeah. And you could see as like almost like a guy that was a former vegan and then the veggie, you can see the logic like, oh, well, mm. well it's just a little frog. It's not like I'm killing mm. a massive stag. I'm just killing a little frog. Mm. And then it's almost like you think, actually, I'm having to kill loads of these. I'll go mm. to chickens. Oh, but they're still, still too small. And then made the realization, okay, I'm going to go full hunter. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go full meaty to hunter. And then I can easily cook enough cabbages, carrots, and a, f- a few maybe it's like small bits yeah. of like grain or whatever I don't know to to to, to mix that supplement with that. like a steak or some mm. venison sausages or whatever he's made. I'm sure he made loads of all sorts of stuff because obviously got, there's, there's stuff all like different cuts throughout the whole animal mm-hmm. and you're not going to waste any part of it. Are you? No. Um, Particularly if you already have that mindset of not yeah. wanting to kill it, you're gonna get. Yeah, you're gonna make sure. You, yeah, it. and I'm sure you use the hide and everything. I'm yeah. sure you like use the hide for like something. You know. Do you know what that reminds me of? What's that, that that almost brings up to me is that. He's clearly just discovered himself where he fit in the food chain. Yeah, that, and that's also, all that is, isn't it? It's like also, a, why why our ancestors even evolved to be like mm, we are mm, because it makes sense, mm, man. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's like we we talk about how smart nature is a lot of the time. We speak mm. about you know if you were to just get rid of any animal, mm. it, how much of a difference it would make because every animal has their own part. But I feel yeah. like that shows that a human, if a human is trying to work outside of its food chain, yeah. he could have just, this guy could have just genocided frogs like, in the area, you know? But yeah. because he finally switched on, was like, oh no, this is, you know, this is where I fit in the food chain. Mm. He's probably not actually making a bad, like you were saying, it's better for the ecosystem yeah. and better for him. So it yeah. works out both ways. It's sustainable both ways. And I think it's very simple. I can even think in my own head, even as like a big bloat, like I'm like 17 mm. stone, that's like, 235 pounds for any Americans or people that go buy Imperial mm-hmm. or like how many kilos is that? I don't know, like 115, something like that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, even for myself, right? I know that I could, even though I would definitely lose some weight if I was living like it every day over the course of a couple of months, I could live if I had to over say like off of like, say like a decent sized steak and a bowl of porridge with like a handful of berries every day, as long as I had like lots of water and yeah, things like yeah, that, yeah. right? Whereas if I had to just live off like the bowl of porridge and a handful of berries, mm. I would be starving. Mm. I would be starving all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's not anything to do with like the porridge being not nutritious or anything like that, or the berries not being nutritious, mm. but there's something super satiating about meat. Well, it, mm. and, and, it's, and I know this just from training and being into nutrition myself anyway, like it's just a fact you can ask any nutritionist or any scientist that knows anything about, you know, food. Protein is by far the most satiating nutrient. Mm-hmm. So basically, it's the most filling nutrient. I like that word, satiating. Yeah, it's just basically, it's just like the posh word for, mm. for like filling. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the most satiating nutrient. So um, I can't remember exactly why, um, but yeah, out of, out of fat, carbohydrates, and protein, it's the most satiating nutrient. And I think you can even picture it in your head. Like, imagine now, right? Imagine if I went and bought you a rotisserie chicken mm. or just cooked up a chicken for mm. you. And I put it on a plate in front of you and I said, man, you have to eat all of this. Mm. Even if you hadn't eaten since like this time yesterday, yeah, you'd get about halfway through it and you'd be struggling, man. Mm. You'd be chewing that meat. Oh, man. And, I, and even if I said, even oh, if I do, you want even if I said, do, I'll give you 50 quid if you eat it. You'd, yeah. Like by the end, man, it would be a struggle and you'd be sweating and you'd feel a bit uncomfortable mm-hmm. and that. Um, and it's just purely because of how full you'd feel. Mm. Whereas if I put like uh, a bag of donuts in front of you, Mm. And it was like eight delicious donuts. Don't get me wrong. It, you'd feel a bit sick by the end, but that would be more because of how unhealthy the sugar yeah, is for yeah, you yeah. and how sickly the sugar would be. It wouldn't actually be because of necessarily how filling the donuts yeah, are. In yeah, fact, yeah, I think sure. things like that are almost dangerously Moorish. And that's one mm. of the reasons why in the West, obviously, there does tend to be a little bit of a problem with like, you know, uh, people being a bit more overweight and, mm. and, and, and stuff like that. It's because... These tasty foods, man, tend to be like not very satiating mm-hmm. foods. They're foods with loads of like sugar crisps and, and stuff. Yeah, For, like, you could literally just eat bags and bags yeah, and bags, and you wouldn't even that feel like you like, still feel hungry. Or like look, or like look at like chocolate and stuff. Like look mm. how many like calories and how much sugar say in like four cubes of chocolate in a mm-hmm. bar, right? And it's actually pretty staggering. Mm. But who just wants to eat four yeah, little yeah, blocks yeah, of yeah. chocolate? You want to eat like half a block. Of, of chocolate at a time, don't you? It's like when you, you know? get sweets and then they have like the recommended portion on the back. Yeah. Maybe like three sweets. You're yeah, like, you're like, man, eats, I've just bought an entire bag three of sweets. sweets I ain't buying yeah. it. I only eat, I'm not only eating free. Yeah. You yeah. want to eat all of them and then you realise if you ate all of them, it would be like 600% of your <laughs> recommended daily allowance of sugar and you're like, oh man. And then you start like, you know, have like weird red blotches and you're like, yeah, sort of like yeah, feel yeah. really like weirdly, like almost like hyper, but also a bit sick mm. and stuff like that, man. It's like not good. <laughs> Yeah, so um, interesting anyway. Mm. 
Uh, we're going to have uh, nice little mystery Mondays now. We're going to have two mystery Ooh, Mondays today, folks. Mysterious. Um, yeah, just we went through a couple of episodes though where we didn't have any at all. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to balance out by having two today. I'm going to give you one uh, basically now, and mm-hmm. then Bullwinkle is going to give you one in the next hour. That's right. Mystery That's right, Mondays. folks. It's the first mystery Mondays of the night. You are listening to Pandora's box. Um, so I'm going to bring you now the mystery of Portlock. Alaska. Mm. And this is actually a fascinating mystery, man. And I'm surprised I'd never heard of it before. Um, I randomly found out about it a couple of weeks ago. And I thought, this is actually like genuinely intriguing. I'm looking forward to it's this. It's genuinely intriguing. And I'll tell you why. Um, so I'll give you sort of like a brief overview and then we'll go into it. Uh-huh. So the reason why I think this um, mystery is fascinating, because often with mysteries, it happens to either one person or a small group of people. And as a result, regardless of how fascinating it is, there's always that question mark of, um, you know, did it really happen? Mm-hmm. What is the person lying? Were they hallucinating? Um, you know, was it a case of mistaken identity? Mm. So there's lots of reasons why. Easily dismissible. Yeah, easily dismissible or easily explainable, um, things like that. Lots of lots of cause for you to have doubt mm-hmm. with the story. But this, this story is so crazy. Um, they're basically Portlock, Alaska. I'll quickly give you a little bit of information about the place actually geographically. Mm-hmm. So Portlock is a place in Alaska on the southern end of the Kanai Peninsula in south central Alaska. The village of Portlock was established when Captain Nathaniel Portlock oh, I like that. of the Royal British Navy landed there in 1787. It was an unexplored, beautiful area filled with fish and plenty of space. Cool. So they built a settlement there. Um, but what's really interesting about Portlock is basically the whole town, the whole town, whole settlement was abandoned. I mm. think in the fifties or seventies, fifties, sixties, or seventies. We'll find out as the story as the story goes on. Mm-hmm. Um, Ghost town, purely because of the amount of unexplained things that were happening there. Whoa, that's and it's cool. and it's not even just like one thing. It's it's hauntings, but it's also people just disappearing. Man, um, that's actually already that's so intriguing. Multiple, multiple murders. Um, and then the bodies turning up with like unexplainable wounds. Whoa! Like weird wounds that like men couldn't be able to inflict, and that like bears wouldn't normally oh, typically inflict. Man, like I'm already loving this. Um, random attacks, um, sightings of like weird creatures around the like the in the forests around the settlement. Oh my like, god! It's it's like the multitude of sightings. And the fact that the fact that how often is it that you hear about a mystery? Where so much mental stuff is happening, and mm. so many people are disappearing, and get, not not just have seen weird stuff, mm-hmm. are outright getting murdered and disappeared. Mm. So many of them in a settlement that the whole entire town move. That's crazy. The, and to this day, you can go to Portlock, Alaska, but it's a ghost town. I can't believe I haven't heard of this. Before. It's just it's just a rundown yeah. old fishing settlement, and it's a ghost town. Do you know, I'm such a kid when it comes to stories as well. Because oh, if, I love it. if my yeah. name is ever, are you like this? Like, like you said, the person that founded it was called Nathaniel, right? Mm-hmm. If my name's ever involved in a story that I'm listening to, I don't know why, but it piques my interest so much more. I feel like that is me in like a past life. I just like suddenly got the like the image of like this like <laughs> British naval captain, but just like it's just you. It's with, just like, me. It's just you dressed up in like an in like a yeah, 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 in like an 18th those, like, century hats. navy hat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I'm like that with every single story. If, if there's a guy called Nathaniel, then I'm like, yeah, that was me like 50, 200 years ago. Yeah. Crazy. Let's get into the story anyway, folks. So mm-hmm. there was a there's a nearby village um, to, to Portlock called Seldovia and uh, Nanwellock and Port Graham. And all of these villages already reported when the settlement was made that the place was haunted. Mm. There's also... Um, a very near uh, chromium mine nearby to port to port um, to port lock um, so that's just a that's just sort of keep that in the background for yeah now. Uh, many are afraid to visit this area due to the unexplained circumstances that continue to happen to this small town <laughs> time and time again until it was completely abandoned so when did the port lock Alaska mystery begin in 1905 it was reported that all the workers left their cannery jobs due to something mysterious that was, quote-unquote, bothering the camp. Mm. The cannery workers returned the next season, but unexplained events were continually reported. There was a constant air of fear and mystery that began to pervade the small town. 
Hunters and gold miners who headed into the mountains started to disappear completely. Mm. In 1931, one man that was chopping wood was found murdered. After the autopsy, it seemed that the murder was a result of a single blow that was stronger than any human man could manage. Whoa. This, of course, immediately alarmed the town people. One group that was hunting a moose one day reported finding giant footprints in the ground of something that seemed to also be stalking the animal. They arrived at the site of a bloody battle and no moose was found, but blood was everywhere. The footprints that they found were over 18 inches long and headed from that spot into the foggy mountains above. Occurrences like these began to happen regularly around Portlock. So like just almost like a weekly occurrence. Mm, that's mental. Interestingly as well, um, there were indigenous tribes that lived near the area of Portlock um, before you know European settlers mm -hmm. came there. And in all of their ancient stories, they, were, they, they talk of a creature that they called a Nantinak, mm. which they report as a giant half-man, half-beast-like creature. Oh, I'm, I'm picturing like the Minotaur. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, something <laughs> like that, yeah. Um, one resident of Portlock said he saw a huge, hairy man destroying the fish wheels that were along the beach. He ran back to get his gun, and when he returned... The beast stared at him and then walked off into the trees. With these continued sightings, unease began to ramp up in the town. A lot of people were murdered and disappeared, and of the bodies that were recovered, having washed down the rivers into the lagoon, they had strange wounds that it seemed that no bear could make. The loss of these lives took a toll on the small community, and fear, of course, set in. People started to leave, with unexplained disappearances and continued murders. No one felt that they could take a chance and could, and could continue to live there. Mm. Residents took off en masse in 1949, leaving their houses and the nearby chromium mine, the cannery, the teacher cottage and the large school house. This left Portlock as an abandoned town in Alaska and one many people never wanted to return to. People also reported seeing spectres and ghosts walking the towns at night Whoa. and seeing people standing in the windows. Did you say that the neighbouring like towns and stuff all said this place was haunted before anyone even went there? Yeah, yeah, they yeah they had like um like an eerie almost See, like that's like crazy because I did we spoken before yeah. how there is almost like energies about places yeah and I like the idea that, we, that as soon as people went to this place they were instantly like yeah this is not good yeah like, there was like old tales of like creepy mm. stuff going on there yeah. Interestingly, and this guy must have been an absolute, like, Don. He mm -hmm. must have just been, like, a really, like, alpha male. The postmaster of the town decided to, decided to stay on his own. So there was just one guy that just decided to stay living in Portlock on his own. That's that, mental. That was the postmaster of the town. <laughs> so it says only the postmaster remained. Um, but after a year alone, the post office closed in 1950 and the last resident of Portcloth left town. So he lived there on his own for a whole year. I love the way they put that, that the, the post office closed. Like he, was st he would have still been delivering everyone's post while yeah. I was away. Oh, That's no funny. post today. <laughs> Sorry, but guys. What's interesting is that whole year that he was there alone, apparently like he like witnessed continued like weird stuff. Would see like creatures on the outskirts of the town, like like, peer like peering at the post office and would see like like ghostly like, apparitions oh and stuff God. in at night time and like yeah See, crazy. i hate that i hate it imagine that. on imagine, your own oh. i think i think alaska is the biggest u.s state yeah i think texas alone which i think i think texas is the second biggest u.s state bit so trip, 10 times bigger than bit, the uk bit, right? well i think texas is, is bigger than the uk i don't right. I, oh sorry bigger than england i don't think it's as big as the oh, uk right. but i think texas but bear in mind it's just one u.s state. yeah 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 so it's still bigger than the whole of england texas mm. Um, and then Alaska's like way bigger than Texas. Mm. So I don't know exactly how big um, Alaska is, but it's way, way, way bigger than the UK, mm. say, right? And think, you're just in the middle of nowhere, on your own, in this place where apparently, no. where, where it's a fact, it's, it's a place where it's a fact that loads of people have just mur been murdered and disappeared, and that when they've turned up and the autopsies have been done, the coroner's saying that the blows that have killed the, per the person 
a, a human man could not even possibly carry out these yeah, blows because they're so brutal and they're so powerful. Like, what the hell? Mm. What the hell? And they're saying at the same time that it's not the sort of ways that, like, bears would kill people. Yeah, that's it's not like, where you want to be. So, living, like, is what it? is it? And then it's By like, yourself. they're like old tales, like indigenous tales of, like, weird beasts and stuff living in the mm. freaking woods. And then you could just, like, see ghosts at night and stuff just walking down the Think road. Think as well that it's up in Alaska. And Alaska's, like, I assume it's the same as sort of all those northern places. Oh, where it's just covered you, in snow. It's just going to be cold. really dark all the time as well. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's either going to be in oh, summer, sure just constantly, yeah. like, oh, but in winter. It will literally be dark. Like, oh yeah, the there's there's that day. movie. Have you ever seen that horror movie? And it's called Thirty Days of Night. No, and it's got Josh Hartnett in. It's no, basically, it's, that it's, sounds that it's, sounds like what I imagine. This it's to a be good like. it's a good movie, man. It's it's basically it's set in Alaska, but it's like a vampire movie, mm-hmm. and it's basically about yeah, it's like this Alaskan town, and apparently, I think there is like in northern Alaska, there are mm. places where you, there will be th- for like thirty days. Yeah, there will be like no sunlight. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, crazy. I can imagine you'd hate to live there. <laughs> I would. You I, love I, the I sun and stuff, don't you? It. You love the sun. It's crazy, isn't it, as well? Just like on a little, on like a little um, going off on one a bit. Because the amount of people in the UK that you hear suffer from seasonal affective disorder. Mm. And think, it's like even in like the coldest, darkest winter, like, you know, over, you know, even like in like November, you know, just, you know, places like, you know, December, mm. we still do have um, like about, well, yeah. how many, well, like eight hours of sunlight or something like that? Yeah, enough, you yeah. think. It's not like it's like dark all day. No, no. It might be like go dark at like four or something, mm. but it's not like it's dark all day. Imagine living in a place where it's just dark for like 30 days on it. On it. Yeah, that's mental. Crazy. And then on the other hand as well, like days where it would just be complete sunlight the whole yeah, day. That's, weird. that's crazy as well, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah, well, I guess in those places, I guess it has to, It's. I guess it's, it's going to be dark for 30 days. It's going to be, I don't know. Um, but anyway, let's get back to it. So yeah, the um, the guy the guy left. Finally, after a year of living alone, the guy left and said that continued. Um, when he was asked, he said, "Yeah, weird things ca- happened, carried on happening that whole year he was there alone." Uh-huh. So the town experienced over fifty years of hauntings, murders, and disappearances before the people finally gave up and just completely left the town. So the question is, does anybody live in Portlock, Alaska today? Portlock is still mostly uninhabited, it says. I think it's interesting mm. that it says mostly uninhabited. Mm. What, there are a couple of... Apart from the ghosts. Yeah, there's a couple <laughs> of people living there, apparently. The town, though, was completely dissolved as a census-designated place in the 1980s and has not been reported again since then. So, yeah, so the government's just given up on doing any censuses. Mm-hmm. However, the town does still get occasional visitors. In the 1970s, a fisherman forced to take refuge from a storm stayed in the abandoned town of Portlock overnight. But even in that one night he was there, he reported something strange walking up outside of his camp and he could tell from the sound that it was walking on two feet. Oh my God. It terrified the man and he left as soon as possible the next day. See, even that, that's like crazy. The thing thing about this town is it's so fascinating. You think like, you know, the first visitor there in, in like years, he stayed there one night. Mm-hmm. And even in that one night, something, some, something like, massive, crazy happened. Some like crazy creature on two feet, like walked up and was like, you could like hear it like, walking around his camp. Mm-hmm. That's just freaky, man. Do I have this almost weird, like morbid curiosity where I really want to go there now. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, I, I, mean, I, yeah. I want to know what's going on, you know? Yeah, I do as well. Pandora's box goes to Portlock. Yeah, imagine that. Should we see how, if we can get a flight to Portlock? That would be hilarious, man. Mate, if that we would, had like some mental experience. experience. Imagine doing we'd a podcast we'd and have you to just take hear someone with, like walking around outside. We'd have to take it with the cameras and stuff. Yeah, imagine yeah, if we yeah, just yeah. disappeared. Yeah. Or if we just got murdered. Man. Oh, man. That would be like the What a way to go, mate. Yeah. We'd well, have to... It's a fact oh. that all these people... That, that's the thing. It's not even conjecture or like a, mm. or like a, an old wives tale. It's a fact that loads of people, people were like, murdered. People and it was like... Uh, and it's like to this day, it's like a mystery. Like it's almost like confirmed that no human did them. So it's like, oh what the hell God. killed those people? Imagine if we did just go there. I thought it was a good idea. And then we were just like, oh man, why have we done this? <laughs> we're just been murked by some mental creature. <laughs> So yeah, um, can you visit Portlock, Alaska today? So it's, this mm. is important for us, potentially. Mm. The ghost town of Portlock, Alaska has a mysterious story. Whether or not this is the stronghold of a Bigfoot in Alaska, you can decide for yourself. The, dis- the disappearances and the bodies found were too horrible for anyone to continue living in this small town. Have you been to Portlock, the whole town that disappeared in Alaska? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so that's pretty much the, that's pretty much the right. end of the story. But Man, that's crazy. I'd love to know... What happened to the bodies that made them say a human couldn't have done it? Apparently, it was like the the just the in, intensity of the blows. Right. So apparently, it was just like you could tell that the person, the people, had been killed by just like one blow. 
but the blow itself was like way too damaging for like yeah. if like a person hit you mm. even with like an object they wouldn't be able to cause that much damage oh my god apparently like they could like tell where the person had been hit and in some instances the person had like flown like 20 feet and just like all their ribs were like caved in and stuff like that and there was just like blood <laughs> everywhere Man, I also think in one of the That's cases because I did. Um, I've looked into it on multiple things. Um, sort of like you know, I heard, I listened to different stories about it on, on YouTube and, and read lots of things on online. Mm -hmm. um, and I do hear that one of the people that died apparently, um, I think it was like a, a lumberjack. Um, he f was found crushed underneath like uh, one of the massive chippers. Mm. And um, f for anybody that works in like tree surgery or, or anything like that, like. I've seen like one of those big chippers before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are like, like, n I don't even like, I'm sure like some of like, the world's strongest men could like pick them up for like mm. a second. I don't think they could pick them up over their head. No. I don't know how heavy like the, some big. of these. They're Obviously, big. there's varies and they vary in size as well. Like you can get some small chippers, but this would have been like a, a professional like lumber mill quality mm -hmm. chipper. So I'm, I'm assuming for like a, a lumber mill or like a lumber site. It would have been like a massive one yeah, because you're, yeah, you're yeah. chopping down a massive North American um, like trees, mm -hmm. you know, which are which are massive trees. So you're not going to have this like measly little chipper. But yeah, apparently one of the guys was found, and it was saying that like whatever did it must have picked up the chipper. Oh my and, god! And like overhead, and then like th and then like crushed the guy, and like throw. You know what's guy creepy and, like, about that underneath. is that almost seems like more. In that seems intelligent. Yeah, yeah. Like to to pick up an object and throw it at someone. Yeah, that's not like something you predict a bear to do or something, is it? No, I don't think a bear would do so that. So like that's you, crazy. you see you do see videos of bears lifting like massive rocks and that, but that's mm. because they're looking for like grubs and stuff yeah, underneath exactly, it to eat. Yeah. Whereas like a bear, obviously, I don't think there's any video of like a bear like picking up no, like a rock no, to like no. throw at a human. No, why would they need to? Mm. They would just go up to the human and just destroy it mm. with its like put with its overwhelming power and claws and teeth. Do you know what I mean? That is terrifying. Yeah, mental case, isn't it? Absolutely mental mm -hmm. case. I can't believe I've not heard that before. I couldn't believe I'd never heard of it either. Because yeah. it's it's uh, it's not only is it one of the craziest stories, but it's also one of the most credible stories. Mm. You mm. know exactly. As I said, like freaking, it's not just like one or two people. Multiple A whole like, town, like, loads of murdered <laughs> people, load of people that disappeared. Um, and a whole town just literally left because they were like, man, like we're just too many of us just getting mm. killed, and we don't even like know what's going on here. But like every night is like a horror movie. That's mental. That's yeah. such a good mystery. I love that. That's cool. So yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed that mystery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the mystery of Portlock, Alaska. And um, we're gonna listen to a track now. We'll be back in a minute, folks. Pandora's box is about to open wide. Welcome back, everybody. You are listening to Pandora's yeah. box. For people listening on the radio, that last track was so long by the darkness, and before that we had Regenerator by King. Buffalo. I'm bringing you um, a savage, savage story now, everyone. Mm -hmm. Not savage in the sense of the of the um, Portlock town or anything like that. That was a different type of savage. This is more of like a, you know, when you like cringe at something so hard that it just sort of makes you like, do you want to sort of like just grind your teeth until they just break? <laughs> right. You're like, oh! I'm excited for this. I'm like, excited for cause this. Because I think everybody can put yourselves on this person's shoes and imagine actually how awful it would be. Oh. This is like the sort of thing that usually would happen in like a movie or something, but wouldn't ever happen in real life. But this is a true story. So um, let me let me get out of you guys. Let me get out of you. That's what she said. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> this is so brutal, guys. This is so brutal. Does it need a um a, an alert before we before we talk about this? What like a, a trigger warning? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. I wouldn't go that far. Okay, I cool. wouldn't go that far. Right. So, a man who was adopted at birth has discovered the woman he has been married to for the last six years and has two children with is his biological sister. Oh my! Can you God. believe that? The man was part of a closed adoption and has no access to record about his biological parents. But he recently submitted, submitted some DNA for analysis in a bid to see if he is a suitable donor as his oh, wife knew, needs a new kidney. So, you know, wanted to see if his DNA was compatible enough with his sister, to, you know, for her. A to, nice to man. A yeah, nice exactly. But in a weird turn of events, the DNA testing found... <laughs> The testing found a DNA match so high that they oh. must be brother and sister. Oh my god. The man said 
My wife got sick just after our son was born and now is in need of a kidney transplant. We checked with her relatives and none were a match or a viable donor. I knew it would be a long shot, so I decided to get tested to see if I could donate to one of my kidneys. But I got a call the other day saying that I was a match, but that wasn't where it ended. The doctor then said something about wanting to do some additional testing due to some information from the HLA, as it's known, which stands for Human Lycocyte Antigen Tissue Test Results. He said, I didn't think much of it and agreed to the follow-up tests. He was then given the news when the results came back, adding, I was both shocked and confused. He explained that because of how DNA information is passed down through generations apparent to a child could have at least a 50% match and siblings could have either from have anything from a, a 0 to 100% match. Um, it was rare to have a high match as husband and wife, so I asked, what does this mean? To go back a little bit, the man and his and his <laughs> this sounds, it's, I swear the way this article is written is almost like mocking. It doesn't say it doesn't say the man and his wife met eight years ago. It says the man and his sister met eight years ago. <laughs> the pair exchanged numbers and eventually he transferred offices just to be closer to her. He said, We're related. No, I'm not kidding. She's my sister. I don't know what to do moving forward, but I know that this is wrong. But she is my wife. And she is the mother to my kids. Oh man, mate. what do you do? If you're him, what do you do, <laughs> mate? You got. I think you got to separate, mate. You can't, <laughs> mate. I don't care. Like it's the thing is, I really feel for him because they like up until now it seems like they had a pretty nice marriage. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like they're married, they've got kids. He clearly loves her enough that he's literally willing to donate one of his organs mm -hmm. for her. You know. Um, do you reckon that's why she got ill? After she gave birth, she gave birth to like an incest, incest child or something. <laughs> something like a crazy creature, gave birth to a demon, half dragon, half human. Uh, maybe Tutan Carmu. <laughs> but um, who knows, man? Who knows? I mean, oh, I, don't, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't see. Obviously, I'm, I'm a. I'm something of a scientist myself. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? No, I was going to say I'm not. I'm not like a scientist, obviously. Um, but. Uh, or like a doctor in, in in this sort of speciality, but I don't see how um, having a kid could in any way affect your kidney. Do you know right. what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Like, how could essentially having sex with somebody, yeah, and them in, and then and them inseminating you, mm. how could that suddenly affect your kidney? Your kidney breaks down, yeah, yeah, like um, like toxins in your body, essentially, doesn't it? That's why, like, you know, mm. um, you'll get like kidney kidney or liver failure. Like, if your kidneys fail. Your your body can't take away basically like the the nasty stuff from your urine, mm -hmm. um, and then you can basically die from internal poisoning. Mm. That's like what happens if your kidneys fail. Mm. So obviously you have like urea and stuff like that in your urine, which is basically toxic. But our kidneys basically take care of it and we mm. wee it out. If your kidneys fail, I'm not sure if you can't. You literally can't wee when you. I think that's right. I think if your kidneys I think, fail, I think yeah. you can't wee. But as a result, I think all of that because oh, wee and poo essentially is just like. The nasty yeah. stuff, the stuff that you've our got body to get rid of. doesn't want. Mm -hmm. um, it, like basically, we filter out the good stuff, don't we? The nutrients, mm -hmm. and we get rid of the nasty stuff, um, and that's what we and poo is. <laughs> I love so, how quickly this is turned to we and poo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't see how, like, do you know what I mean, having sex with someone yeah. and them getting you up the duff. Yeah, for even sure. Even if it was your brother, <laughs> I don't see how that would affect your like essentially Man. like weeing organs. But anyway. Um, so he said, yeah, uh, blah, 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 blah. He sh after this news broke, um, one, one person commented, I mean, at this point, you are married with children already. You can't mm. take that back, so I don't see much point in blowing worlds up, I guess. So that was one person's view on the matter. Mm. Another person added, you already have kids, and they are assumably healthy, since you didn't mention any crazy abnormalities in your children. If you're happy, you're happy. Donate the kidney to your sister wife. <laughs> Sister as your sister, I swear that's almost like a low blow, man. I swear that's they're, like they're trolling. Insult, yeah. They're trolling, man. They're trolling. <laughs> Donate the kiss, the kidney to your sister wife, and continue being great parents to your children. A third user said, "Everything's been great this long. No point in changing it." Mm. I have to say, I don't know if I agree with that. Um, don't get me wrong. As I said, I really, really feel for them, but I don't know. Incest is a messy game, dude. Yeah. I mean, even involuntary incest. Mm. Have you seen the movie? Is it? Um, is it old boy? I don't know. Mate, that's brutal. Really? That's like basically the same thing. 
Do you want me to tell oh, you or do you want me to... Yeah, tell me, to, tell me, tell it's me. It's a good movie. I reckon you'd really like it. You right. should watch it. Um, so I think Old Boy was originally a Japanese movie, but it was then um, uh, like a uh, Western version was made. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like American film was made. It's got a really good cast as well. It's got um, Josh Brolin, the guy yeah, that played yeah, Thanos. Yeah, yeah, Thanos, yeah. He's the main character. Cool. And also, funnily enough, another Marvel star, right. um, Elizabeth Olsen, who okay, plays yeah, Scarlet yeah. Witch. Yeah, yeah, cool. She's the... They're, they're the two protagonists. Right. So he's the main male character. She's the main female the brother character. brother and sister. <laughs> no, he's... It's even worse, mate. Oh, no. He... It's like in the story... I can't remember the exact... I can't remember if it's like he gave a daughter up for adoption. Oh. Or, or he thought that she was dead and she wasn't actually dead. I think it's something like... There's like basically it's like uh, mm. it's like Japanese gangster, so I think it's like the accuser or something. So it's mm. basically it's like Josh Brolin versus the accuser. Essentially, right. I don't know if it's actually the accuser, but it's essentially what it is. It's like Japanese mm-hmm. gangsters. So I can't remember if it's like he thought that it's a long time I watched this movie, like ten. Yeah, ten yeah, and I've yeah. only watched it once, and it was like ten year, plus years ago. So if I get this wrong, everyone, don't try not to be like too hard on me, right? But I think it was something like his wife. He thought the accuser killed his wife and his daughter. Right. Either that, or his wife was killed, and then because he's basically like almost like a like a James Bond type character, but like darker mm. and more violent. It was like, you know, less glamorous. Mm. He was like, he gave her up for adoption. Something like that. Mm. Anyway, either way, cuts to like 20 years later and he's like getting all his revenge on these like Yakuza guys going on this absolute war path, mm-hmm. like killing Yakuza left, right and centre. Anyway, he gets tangled up somehow, meets this woman by chance. She gets embroiled in it and tangled up in it. And then there's like this, and obviously it's like, you don't know this mm-hmm. in the movie, so you're watching it. And you're like feeling for them both, and you know she's a super attractive woman, mm. and blah 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 blah. So you're like just thinking like, oh, you know, you're sort of like happy for him. And there's there's like quite like a, a oh like a fairly God. graphic sex scene. You know, it's like an eighteen. Yeah. I think it must be an eighteen. It's a pretty graphic sex scene. And then right at the end of the movie, basically like the Yakuza boss is like, yeah, um, yeah, like we we like plan this the whole time. We like set you up like oh um, that. That's your daughter, God. and he's proper like. <gasps> And like, mate, that's like proper, like, mate. that's like throw up in your mouth. Yeah, sort that's of material. Mate, the, that's another level of. That's like, even worse than your sister, mate. Oh, yeah. That's I way worse. Than, 100%. Because that almost, I think, I think if finding that your sister, you'd feel like super wrong and it would be like mm. a head spin and you'd be like, oh my God, oh man. But it was your daughter, if you found out it was your daughter, mate, that's straight that's up. Like, like another you, level. You would like physically throw up. Yeah. You would yeah, be like, yeah, you'd be like, yeah. ooh, ooh, like, you wouldn't even be able to look at them again. You'd have to be like, I'm sorry, like, I can't ever speak to you again. Mm. I'm going to like give you all my money and mm. I need to like fly to the other side of the planet mm-hmm. and just like live in shame in like Man. some Buddhist retreat somewhere. Mm-hmm. Just trying to like, trying men- to repent, trying sins. to like m- mentally <laughs> repent until the day I eventually Jesus. find peace in death. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, that is not the news you want to hear, is it? And I'm pretty That's sure the movie daughter. ends with like he just he doesn't obviously want to tell her uh-huh. because he knows that it would obviously cause her the same pain that he's feeling. Mm. So I think he just leaves her a note and basically just says like I have to go. Um, just know that I love you or something like that. Oh my god! And then obviously she's like, obviously he's saying it's like you know I love you as my daughter, mm. but she's just like, oh, like why is he? A bit after? weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I guess she thinks man. that, like, he means that, like, I mean, love is love, is the end of, at yeah. the end of the day, isn't it? But I guess she's just like, maybe thinks it's romantic or something. I mean, like, mm. yeah, she would do, I guess. Mm. But it's like I can't ever see you again, and I can't really tell you why. But just know that I love you, and I want you to have a good life. And I can't remember. I think he like leaves us like a big wad of cash right. or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Like something like that. But it's really good though. Mm. Like even though it's awful, it's like awful in a good way because. You don't see it coming. I almost right. feel bad that I've sort of like given away, it, but I think you could still really enjoy the movie. Mm. But I, you, I definitely recommend you watch it, Bullwinkle, yeah. because you will love it. And anybody out there that's listening, yeah, watch Old Boy because even though you know the ending now, it's a great movie, and it's especially mm. if you like action. But it's a great action movie, but it does actually have a really good storyline as well. Mm. So it's not just like it sounds you know, quite good. It's not just like one of those movies where you know you can only enjoy it for the action it actually has mm. got like a pretty good storyline and Josh Brolin does a really good performance in it and I think it was one of Elizabeth Olsen's like first oh, right. big roles like breakout sort of thing yeah and she's like great in it yeah like, the acting's she's like she's a very good actor yeah it's very, like very superb actor. superb acting so it's like great movie but mm. yeah the ending when you're, just, you're like oh my god <laughs> it's like crazy man damn yeah but damn that's reminded me of that but I yeah. can kind of see their perspective of like you know yes it is your sister but You've had your kids, mm. so it's not that like you need any more kids. Don't go risking that or anything. No, oh, no, no, yeah, so, yeah. They're just trying to impregnate your sister. Yeah, exactly, now that you know that. But I can I can see the perspective, but at the same time, it's a sticky one. It's not... I just think in the back of my head, hear. the back of my head, I almost like every time we were like, yeah, every evening when we'd be chilling yeah. out, I'd be like, this is my sister. Mm. Be weird. 
Yeah. Just going yeah. full Egyptian on it. Going full, going, yeah, yeah, going yeah. full, going full Jamie Lannister, mate. <laughs> just really, just wanting to bang your Man. sister. Just full Jamie Not Lannister, <laughs> Game of Thrones. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just think like I personally probably wouldn't be able to just stay married to somebody that I knew was my sister. Mm. But I, I tell you, who also I feel really bad for. Not just a couple. I feel really bad for their kids. Yes. Because say in the, say if you took sort of like the path Man, of like, imagine if you were getting bullied and like and the other kids found out that your parents are brother and your sister. Your mum and dad are brother and sister. Oh, there's your not dad's much coming your, back from that. Your dad's your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> your dad's your uncle and your mum's your aunt. Oh, oh that brutal. is not good, is it? Meet my dad, who is also my uncle. Oh, man. And my mum, who is also my aunt. Yeah, that is just freaky, man. That's awful. And the thing is as well, I said, even if you're going down the route that I'm sort of like, seem to be more inclined to take, which is like the more like separation route, mm. I think that's pretty hard for your kids because it'd be yeah. like a, imagine a massive double, double whammy. Like you think you're in this really nice, stable, like home environment and then your parents break up. That's already pretty savage. Like, oh man, you know, it's a hard thing for like mm. kids to go through, like parents breaking up. It sort of turns your whole world upside down, mm -hmm. not your normality, your routine. Suddenly like you don't, you're not seeing like one of your parents, most likely your dad, like anywhere near as regularly. But then on top of that, you also find out that like your mum and dad are, yeah, a brother and sister. And obviously you would know what that meant, especially because mm. having a sibling, you'd be like, oh my God, I yeah. like grew yeah. up and I just like married you. Yeah. Like to your sibling, if you were like chatting to your sibling about it. Mm. Yeah, it's just dodgy, man. Yeah, that is awful. That so is like awful. awful for the whole entire family. Uh -huh. Awful for the whole entire family. 100%. All right, I've got some, uh, it's time for <gasps> Quick Fire Facts. Let's bring in some Quick Fire Facts for you, quick everybody. So first Quick Fire Fact, did you know that sloths only go for a poo once a week? Because they have such a slow metabolism. It mm. takes them days to digest their food and they climb down from the trees only once a week to have a little poo and then they go back up the trees again. Is it sloths or koalas that are really stupid? I think, I think koalas, koalas is, yeah. Koalas are they also have like chlamydia. One of, the, one of literally the dumbest animals on the yeah, planet. Yeah, they can also give you chlamydia. Mm. Yeah, really, yeah, weird. Um, it's another interesting fact for you now. Did you know that penguins sometimes propose to each other? What? Yeah, and they propose to each That's other cool. with rocks. Male penguins will search for the perfect pe pebble to present to their mate as a symbol of their love and commitment. That's really cool. I like <laughs> that nice, a lot. It? I like that a lot. Yep. There's another quick fire fact, folks. Do you know that the giant squid, we've talked about giant squids quite a lot on Pandora's uh -huh. Box 4, because they're just fascinating, aren't they? Beasts. Cephalopods. Mm -hmm. The giant squid has the largest eyes in the entire animal kingdom, with some measuring over 10 inches in diameter. That's a pretty darn big eye. Obviously, they that need them to crazy. see in the deep, dark depths. Mm -hmm. The shortest living animal in the world is the mayfly. Its entire adult lifespan is just 24 hours. What's more, even more interesting is um, bearing in mind that time is relative, its 24-hour lifespan probably feels as long to it as our lives feel to us. Yeah, see, that is correct. I, I, I struggle yeah. with comprehending that. Yeah, me too. Like, yeah. That's mental, isn't it? Although at the same time, I, you know, I don't think that they probably comprehend a whole lot. No, I think a, may, a mayfly true. is like, what, probably about the same size as like a midge? Mm. So like... How big can the brain be? Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? <laughs> it's a good point. It's a good point. <laughs> but There's it's, not a lot of thinking going on in that. But it is interesting, isn't it, that like time is relative. Mm. It's interesting to think that like theoretically, if you could live for a thousand years, it probably wouldn't seem that much different mm. to like you living like say ninety years. Mm. That is weird, isn't it? Yeah, that is weird. I always loved that in um. Well, I say always. I thought I thought that was quite a cool aspect in the new Game of Thrones, not Game of Thrones, the new Lord of the Rings. Oh, right. Series, oh, right. you know when the power. when he goes and sees the dwarf again for the first time. Oh, and he feels ages. like it's he feels like he hasn't seen him for like a couple of months. Yeah, but to the dwarf he feels portrayed because dwarves in Lord of the Rings they live about two hundred and fifty years, mm -hmm. so much longer than men live. Mm. But obviously elves are immortal, mm. so I think yeah he hasn't seen him in like, so like seventy years. Yeah, something, something like that. I don't know exactly. But and yeah. he's almost like oh I just thought it had been like a couple of months or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was crazy. I thought that was a really cool cool. Because by that touch. point Elrond's already been around for like thousands of years. Mm. So to him it's like you know i guess going like 50 years without seeing someone would be like going like yeah would be like going like a couple of months yeah. without seeing someone yeah, like. yeah, but yeah. i haven't seen um i haven't seen your brother josh now since like january and funnily enough mm. he was messaging me yesterday he was like yeah man it seems like it's been ages and i was like oh yeah i suppose that's been about two months now but like i just didn't really think about it mm. do you know what i mean but it's like yeah it's crazy isn't it yeah weird so some some more facts now folks the old the world's oldest piece of chewing gum is over nine thousand years old <sighs> The, the fossilised gum, partially fossilised gum, was found mm. in Sweden 
and was made back in the day from birch bark tar. Mm. So the ancient Swedes, the Swedes of 9,000 years ago, used to make chewing gum out of birch bark tar, and it would have had like a nice, like woody, like flavour to it, but quite nice, you know, almost like a bit aromatic. Mm. And they would chew it, and it would have the same consistency as modern chewing gum. That's quite cool. It's interesting, isn't it? Mm. The tallest man in on record in history was a man called Robert Wadlow, mm. and he was from the United States. He was a whopping... 11, sorry, 9, sorry, 11 feet, <laughs> 8 feet and 11 inches tall. Mm. But if you think about that, that is that is staggeringly tall. I've seen photos of like Shaq stood yeah. next to like a car yeah, 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 of him yeah. Yeah. and it's ridiculous. And yeah, of course, because I think what's Shaq, like 7 foot 2 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and, and Shaq to like other people oh, is a beast. You, for anybody listening, like type in, say, The, the Rock, Dwayne Johnson, he's like, mm. what, 6'4", six, 6'5"? And like massive, mm. it's like so big. He would he would make me look small. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he looks like a child there's, there, and there's comparison. pictures of him stood next to Shaq. And yeah, he it's like a little kid stood next to their dad. Have you ever seen the video, the photo of um, Shaq like drinking a bottle of water? There's like a fo- famous no, photo of I'm Shaq drinking no. a bottle of water, and it's like it looks like a can in his hand, yeah. but it's like a full bottle. Yeah, but it, his hands are just like so massive. He's, he's one big. of those guys as well. He's not just tall; like his proportions are massive. Yeah, aren't they? Yeah, like everything about him. Like I'd like be interested to know what his shoe size is, mm. but I bet it's like twenty or something. I wonder ridiculous. what he weighs because he must weigh a lot because he's a big guy. That's, I'll quickly look at up. Very big guy. How heavy is Shaq? Mm. That's such a funny like thing. <laughs> how heavy? How heavy? Is Shaq? How heavy is Shaquille O'Neal? One hundred forty-seven kilograms. What's that? Do you know that's not that's not not as much as as I I thought. thought. No. So what's that in pounds and stone? That's like double me. But I would almost have expected to be more than that. That's not as any man. I'm like he's not that much heavier. What I swear, like (laughs) that can't be right. He's like not much heavier than me. (laughs) I mean, yeah, he's too fair. He's fair. He's like the difference between me and you. Yeah. And you and Shaq. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm, I'm like 235 pounds and Shaq is 324 pounds, mm. or like just over. 324.08. Yeah, I have to say, I thought that he would have probably been like 350, yeah. maybe even north of that. Because to put it into perspective, I think Eddie Hall, um, who's, uh, you know, was the last Brit to what... No, actually, he's not the last Brit to win World's Strongest Man. What am I on about? Um, Tom Stoltman's the current World's Strongest Man. He's a Scot. Mm. He's won it for the last two years in a row, I think. But... um. Yeah, so Tom Stockman's last is the current world's strongest man. He's Scottish, but the last English man then, okay, to, mm-hmm. win, to win the world's strongest man was Eddie Hope, who won in what, 2018, I think, Botswana, I think. Um, and uh, I think he's 375 pounds at the moment, but he's like the same. He's like six two. Yeah. So that seems a bit he's weird. Not that tall. If you saw Eddie next to Shaq, you mm. would never think that he was no. heavier. No, no, I'm not at all. It's quite deceiving, isn't it? Mm. I do think that sometimes weight can be deceiving though, because um I remember once and I almost like didn't really know what to make of it. But I remember um a guy I know a couple of years ago. I can't remember why I said how heavy I was, but I just said how heavy I was in front of them. And they were mm. like, oh, I thought you'd be heavier than that. And I was like, would you? And they were like, yeah, I thought you'd be like 18 and a half stone. And I was like, all right. And I was just like, yeah, I didn't really sort of, but I thought like, that's interesting. Like, I don't I don't really yeah. know why. Yeah, like, yeah, why yeah. You would, like, do you know what I mean? Like, But it's interesting the thought that they would have thought that. Like to me, I, I guess like, I think like, I probably, just the you are. <laughs> yeah, I just probably look about as heavy as I am. Mm. But I do think that that can be the case. Um, and I do know, um, for example, that apparently a lot of um, like bodybuilders and that's like fake their weight. So apparently, a lot of bodybuilders say they're heavier than they are, right? Because in that whole sort of like world, even though it seems really silly, it's mm. almost like it's almost seems as like more macho. Yeah, it sounds yeah, more yeah. impressive the to be you like are, the bigger you are. Yeah, if, if you say like I'm 285 pounds of rock solid muscle, it sounds more impressive than being like I'm like 230 pounds of rock solid. Yeah, muscle. Because yeah, yeah. 230 pounds is like super heavy. As I said, I'm like 235 pounds. Mm. And let's face it, if you're like solid muscle, like I'm not solid muscle. I've got like mm. a bit of a dad bod at the moment. But like, if you're like solid mu- muscle, that's like, like there's not many people that are freaking 235 pounds. No, no, to put no, into perspective, beast. when Arnie was at his peak, mm. I think he was like 235, 240. Damn, I would thought once again. Th- we're saying it, it's, but you would think that he. I would think he'd be heavier than that. Yeah, I would think that he'd be like twenty stone. Yeah, I'd just spend so to put into perspective, guys. As I said yet again, for people watching on YouTube or or Spotify, I'll, I'll, what's universally regarded as Arnold Schwarzenegger's best ever physique, I think, is the nineteen seventy four Mister Olympia. Right. Obviously, 
things like this, it's down to opinion at the end of the day because different people have different, yeah, you know, it's d different varies. Mm. It, it varies from, from person to person. But the general consensus, I'd say, that is that 1974, that's 1974 Mr. Olympia right. was Arnold's peak physique. And the reason why is because just after the 1974 Mr. Olympia, that's when Arnie started trying to get into films. Right. And um, he got a, a place in a movie called Stay Hungry, mm -hmm. which is a movie with Sally Fields, I think her name is, and Jeff Bridges. So like okay, yeah, big, yeah. big stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is back in like the, the 70s, of well, 1974, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, so like a really young Jeff Bridges, Sally Fields, I think is the name of the lady, sort of fa famous actress. But he was so massive at the time, the director said, you can only have the part in the movie if you slim down to 210 pounds. <laughs> so Arnie had to lose loads of weight. Mm. So even though he came back and won the 1975 Mr. Olympia, which is the one that Pumping Iron, the famous right. bodybuilding movie Pumping Iron was filmed. Right, right, right. It's like a documentary that sort of follows like the pr the prep of like all the biggest bodybuilders in the world for the mm -hmm. 1975 Mr. Olympia. So it's got Lou, like Lou Ferrino, who obviously was the Hulk back in the old television series. Mm. Franco Colombo, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mike Katz, Ed Corney, those guys. Mm. Um, so he had to put on mu mu back muscle again mm. to get to, to, to for the 1975 Mr. Olympia, and he still won. But up until that point. Up until the 1974 Mr. Olympia, he'd just been like improving and getting heavier and heavier. Right. Like gradually, year to year, pretty much since he was like a boy, since he was like 15 years old. So then obviously to lose a load of weight and then have to put it back on again, that was quite hard. Yeah. So everyone, most people will think that um, the 1974 Mr. Olympia was his peak. So let me get a mm -hmm. picture of, of him in the 1974 Mr. Olympia. But yeah, again, I said he, was, he was like... So this, that's him on the left. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a modern bodybuilder, mm -hmm. the guy on the right. But that's to put in perspective how ahead of his time Arnie, Arnie was. Because mm. um, like the guy on the right, 110% is using a lot more steroids. Not just more yeah. steroids, but far more co um, complex steroids. More steroids in general. Steroids that weren't even invented when Arnie was around. Mm -hmm. And uh, for lack of a better term, better steroids. And what I mean by that is steroids that are better at putting on muscle mass. Mm -hmm. Arnie would have been on a couple of basic things. But you can see, um, like, like, look at his like chest development and stuff. Yeah, here. that's crazy. It's like, that is crazy. You see here, like, nineteen seventy four, Arnold's biggest physique ever. So yeah, it's like sort of like well thought of. Like, but well. muscle, muscle's so like light, isn't it? The difference well, between really. like a, a kilogram of uh, fat and a kilogram of muscle. No, it's fat, the, the no muscle's is... heavier than fat. Oh yeah, no, that's what I meant. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah sorry, yeah. no, that's what I meant. It's like so yeah. much heavier, yeah. isn't it? Because you get a kilogram of fat, and it's like a yeah. big thing. And then a kilogram of muscle. It might is look so bigger, lean. but muscle's dense. Yeah, like super dense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, look at him and like, yeah, I mean, just crazy muscle. But yeah, again, as I said, to me, he looks bigger there than 235, 240 oh, pounds. Because you've got to bear in mind, like Arnie's about six two as well, so he's mm -hmm. not like a short guy for a bodybuilder. He's really tall. You can see how like tall mm. Lou Ferrino and Arnie are. Like Lou Ferrino was like I think six five or something like that, and Arnie's yeah like six two something like that. Mm. So really, really tall guys. But um. Yeah, a lot of bodybuilders make up. Like, look at his like lats there. That's mm -hmm. crazy. A lot of people, yeah, a lot of bodybuilders make up their weight, and they say they're heavier than they are. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, isn't it? I often think though as well. Like when you see guys that are like really chiselled, they look bigger and heavier than they are purely because of the muscle that's on display. Mm. It's interesting, and often you see it. And I remember, um, you know, the wrestler Triple H. Mm. I remember he said, because he lost a lot of weight around like the year 2000, the year 2001. Right. And he said that a lot of people, even like backstage and wrestlers and that were like, man, you've put on loads of muscle. Like, what have you been doing? And he said that he didn't actually put on any muscle. What he'd done is just lose a bit of fat. Mm. And what's amazing is, is as soon as you like lose the fat and you're carving out those details, it gives the almost like impression that you've yeah. put on all this muscle, yeah, but you yeah, haven't. Yeah. It's just that your muscle, you're showing your muscles. Mm -hmm. and I can actually, I'll, I'll show like some picture of Triple H so you can sort of see like if I type in like 1999 um, Triple H like look he looks he do, I, I see exactly what people mean like he does look he does look like uh, not as as big mm. so I think that's sort of him yeah like 1999 like a bit of the chub yeah almost like looks a bit a like chubby bit. Mm. do you know what I mean like looks like pretty good there but almost like yeah yeah again mm. a bit a bit bit of a chubster and then he in round two the year 2000 2001 he got chiseled and he suddenly looked fantastic mm -hmm. but i think you can actually sort of tell if you really do sort of try and think about it 
he doesn't actually look big. He it does sort of like appear that he looks bigger, but he's actually just way more toned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this sure. is what I mean. There's something about being more chiselled. It makes you look bigger, but you're not actually bigger. Mm-hmm. You're just leaner. Like he looks freaking great there. I think. Mm. An enviable, an enviable physique. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just lost weight. He didn't actually put on any muscle. He just lost weight. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool, isn't it? Can't remember why I even started going on to this. No, Didn't neither. Ask. But that was cool. <laughs> yeah, oh, because of Shaq. Ah, we were talking about go. how massive Shaq is. <laughs> yes. And we were talking course. about Robert Wadlow, who Robert was Wadlow. eight foot eleven. So I don't think I think a lot of people will hear that and you'll think, yeah, that sounds big, but it's hard to comprehend actually how big that is. Mm. So like think for any say let's say if you're listening out there and you're like, say, like a five foot four woman, mm-hmm. right? Think about how big like a six foot two man yeah. seems when he's next to you. But then think about the fact that he's still only less than, he's just under a foot taller than you. Mm. Now imagine that me, I'm like six two. And now imagine that this guy would be just under three foot taller than me. Mm. So yeah, as I said, imagine, see, think, about what, think about what it seems like when you've got somebody that's about a foot taller next to you and how dwarfed you feel. Mm. Now imagine that this guy was almost three foot taller than me. That's crazy. That is actually mad. Insane. Like, I don't know how tall my daughter is, Evie. She's just turned three. But like, yeah, I mean, she's got to be... She'd be up to like his shin. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just trying to think about how tall she is compared to me. Like, she's Mm. not half my... She's not not three foot yet. She's definitely not half the height of me. But even so, do you know what I mean? It's like the size difference between me and Evie would Mm. would probably be not that much difference. Yeah, yeah, Between me as a six foot two... 235 pound or 17 stone man mm. not that difference between me and, and Robert Wadlow crazy that's crazy isn't crazy. It? so yeah another, another fact for you guys now after we went on a full on tangent <laughs> um, or I did a cockroach can live for several weeks without its head because it breathes through tiny holes in its body segments this is one of the many reasons why we think it's one of the few animals that would probably survive massive nuclear holocausts mm. that's pretty mad isn't it mm. just doesn't even need its head to just, yeah, just breathe through creepy little holes in its body. That's mental. Something a bit creepy about that, isn't it? Polar bears are nearly invisible under infrared photography. Due to their thick fur, polar bears are highly effective at retaining heat and are nearly invisible under infrared photography, which is commonly used to track animal movements in the wild. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That's so they're sick. just like almost like invisible. Mm-hmm. Shows how good they are at keeping in the heat. Especially when you can think that they're the, actually the largest species of bear. Mm. The largest species of bear on the planet, and they're like at the same time they're almost like ghostly, like yeah. invisible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just seems almost uh, like a bit my sketchy. They're favourite type of bear. I think I they really very like cool. polar bears. They're very cool. So cool. You wouldn't like one if you met one, though. True. They're also the only um, species of bear on the on the planet that, without a doubt, if it saw you, would a hundred percent try and kill you then and there. Really? Yeah. Uh, they're very territorial. Aren't Not they? just that, but they're strictly carnivorous. Whereas every other species of bear is omnivorous, mm. or like you know, panda bears are are herbivorous. They're mm-hmm. the exception in the other uh, extreme, extreme. But yeah, like brown bears, black bears, the everything berries, mm. tubers, fish, animals. Whereas polar bears only eat meat because they've evolved mm. in a climate where it's too cold. So have a meat or snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's too cold for vegetation. So mm-hmm. they just eat seals and moose and yeah, mm. that's about it. <laughs> anything else, so caribou, cool. anything, anything like that. I do buy. love the photos after they've like had a meal and, and they're just covered, just covered in blood. Just like, in blood. It seems more menacing, doesn't it? Because yeah. the fact they're white, it just sticks out more. Mm-hmm. It just sticks out more. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Um, did you know that falling in love is associated with an increased activity of the immunity genes in women? In other words, love can literally help us fight off viruses like colds and the flu. Oh, nice. Maybe that's, that's why. Cool. Maybe that's why I don't get ill often. Yeah, because I'm just so full there of love. There you go. Baby. There you go. Maybe that's why I'm always ill. Ah, oh, bro, <laughs> savage, dude. Someone give Bullwinkle some love. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't want to obviously speak too soon because I'm probably going to get suddenly just like die of the black death, like random, like the first case mm. in like a thousand years. But I almost like I think it's like weird how much I don't get ill. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I don't know why I am always ill, but I, I'm. I'm never like. I don't know. Yeah, it is weird. Never lacking the love. Yeah. <laughs> never the lacking the love, yet still always ill. Exactly, man. <laughs> so literally, my daughter was savagely ill all last week. My missus mm. has been ill this week because she caught it off her. Mm. Mate, without getting too graphic in that, I've still been kissing my missus and everything. Mm. Like, obviously sleeping in the same bed as my missus. Literally, like, last week while Evie was ill, she's like, you know, because we play a lot of musical instruments together. 
She's got this ocarina, uh-huh. and she was literally like snotting and slobbering <laughs> over the ocarina. She was playing it, and I was just taking it off her, and I was like playing it, and I could like feel the slimy snot, like uh, thing. But I was still playing it. I'm a dad. I don't care. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm a dad. Yeah, like course. it doesn't. If obviously if it was anyone else, I'd be like, you are gross. <laughs> but it's my daughter. Like I love her. I, would, I don't care. Mm. But um, and like so that's like yeah, literally like lurgy as hell snot mm. I like had in my mouth. Let's like, just I'm just fine. That's a good sign. It's a good way to be. I don't haven't had COVID as far as I'm aware. Mm-hmm. Either that, or I'm just a full-on non-responder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I said I don't want to speak too soon because I feel like as soon as you verbalize something, you're almost like setting yourself yeah, up for death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tempting fate. <laughs> I remember I said that actually. Um, our good mate Nicky C's birthday party. Um, his birthday's um January seventh. Shout out Nicky C. And also, just on the subject of Nicky C, I'll try not to branch too much, folks, mm. as I always do. But Nicky C's <laughs> been working out with me, um, for like the no last sort of month or something. And he is kicking ass in the gym. Nice. Like, he is doing... I, like, he couldn't be doing better. Mm. Every week he's been hitting PBs, crushing it. And talk about a sponge. I will, like, talk him... Like, tell him how to do movements he's never done before. Mm. And obviously, like, one job is, like, a... As, like, a... You know, as, like, a coach. Um, someone that's, like, trained to be a PT. You, you want to put things, obviously, in a way that anybody can understand mm-hmm. and, and and they're, they're basically what you, what you call them is like cues so you like you have like cues for an exercise and it's just the cue will just be things to think about which will naturally improve the exercise so a cue could be say you're doing a deadlift i would say think big chest mm-hmm. shoulders back things like that you know um imagine that you're leg pressing the world away from you as well as yeah. putting the bar yeah, up yeah, and yeah. things like this by doing these things you'll naturally start doing the exercise correctly when I tell him, like, Nicky sees these things, like, literally, I'll explain it to him once, and he will do the exercise perfectly. Mm-hmm. Just the natural. He will just carry out the exercise, like, in terms of, like, t- in terms of, like, technique, perfectly. Mm. And I tell you what, man, it is so nice training people like that. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> it's just, like, it's just really easy. You know what I mean? But it's, like, it's, it's great. It's so easy how it just seems to go in his ear, and then it's just his brain, just, like, in this nice little neat and tidy way he just goes okay I know exactly what you're saying mm-hmm. and then he'll just carry it out I'm just mm-hmm. like mate that's amazing nice so as a result he's just focusing on every week just just you know improving a little bit every week in terms mm-hmm. of the weights and that absolutely fantastic but yeah anyway shout out Nicky C but yeah um, we went for Nicky C's birthday um, party well birthday meal a couple of months ago in January as I said his birthday is January 7th and mm-hmm. um, I remember actually I was talking to, to uh, Claire your sister-in-law, essentially, mm-hmm. Josh's missus, about that. And then I was like, um, talking about how it's weird. I don't really ever get ill. And then um, she almost like, you know what? Claire was not giving me like, a <laughs> I was like, I'm tempting fate, aren't I? And she was like, yeah. I was like, I'm probably going to like come down with something savage now. Aren't I? She was like, you know what I mean? She was just like, yeah. looking like, oh, you know, because I guess don't it's like, fate. you don't want to like put out that, you know, almost like cockiness, do you, to the world or anything like that. You want to like, mm-hmm. and I say that. And just so if any like like higher being is listening, that's not what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I'm just saying, obviously, like I'm I'm really happy that um that I am not ill mm-hmm. very often. That's yeah. all. It's a good thing to be, man. It's a yeah. good thing to be. Hopefully, it's hopefully I'll keep it up. Health as well. Apart from anything else, yeah, exactly. And also apart from anything else, um obviously when your missus is ill and your kids like getting over something, it's like it's good to have somebody in the house that can actually like yeah, yeah. try and pick up some of the slack a bit. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? But yeah, it's a nice little fact, isn't it, about love? Mm. About, you know, how love apparently actually, literally being in love increases your immunity genes. Yeah, that's cool. Fantastic. That's very cool. That is so nuts. Um, this is another lovey fact now, folks. Mm. Some studies have suggested that falling in love may be associated with an increased risk, with an, incre- with an increased risk-taking behaviour, potentially due to the release of hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol that's interesting mm. isn't it i have to say i don't know why falling in love would increase hormones such as cortisol i know that cortisol is essentially the stress hormone mm. so um uh so cortisol is it's basically it's like uh anti-anabolic so it's like you know what you want to be in say talking about training again like you want to you want your body to be in an anabolic state that will like basically put you in like a your body in a state where it's promoting muscle growth and stuff mm-hmm. like that. If you're in a if you're in a catabolic state, then your your body's probably going to be burning your muscle. That's when you'll like lose muscle and you'll probably feel weaker week to week. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's things you can do to encourage being in an anabolic state and things you can do to that will make you go into a catabolic state, like awful sleep, bad diet, blah mm. blah blah, drinking, smoking, drugs. But yeah, um, cortisol is basically the stress hormone. 
So I wonder why... Wow. I swear there's lots of, like, laddish husbands yeah. out there. It's like, oh, yeah, it's because of Mrs. Stresses. You're out here, mate. Yeah. Raising your cool soul. <laughs> but, yeah, that's interesting. Maybe it's because you feel the need to, like... If you are infatuated with someone, you you feel the need to win that person over. Mm. And maybe that's quite a stressful thing. Maybe. That's a good point, Bullwinkle. 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 The echo of Winkles. Cool. Um, there's another love fact for you now, folks. Did you know that falling in love can cause people to overlook flaws in their partner or idealise them? Mm. A, a phenomenon which has been dubbed the halo effect. Mm. This can cause people to perceive their partners as more attractive, intelligent and likeable than they may actually be. Mm. I think that's sort of natural in a way because it's like if yeah. someone's like, they're your person, they're like, well, yeah. You want to see them in the best light. They're like, well, I know they've got their flaws, but they're like... They're my flaws, man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's my person, you know? Like, I don't care about their flaws, you know? Another lovey dovey fact. Oh, mm, the lovey. Valentine's facts. Day. It's like today. Valentine's Day part two. Baby. Yeah. Research has suggested that men are more likely to say, I love you first in a relationship, but women are more likely to be the first to initiate physical touch, mm. such as holding hands. Probably as well was because, you know. I thought you were going to say women would be the first to mean it for a second then. <laughs> <laughs> but women are the first to mean it because. You know, mm. men are just after lies. Yeah. No, I think I I can see I can see that actually. Mm. I, I doesn't make that makes sense to me. Yeah. I think that I can I can see that. You know, I really can see that. Um, interesting that it says women are more likely to init to to be the first to initiate physical touch. But I think I'm actually really glad to hear that because obviously I think one thing as a bloke you would never want to be is to be one of those guys that's like be a bit touchy. Yeah, a bit pervy or like mm -hmm. jump in the gun. You know, like there's like some guys that will like. They will like meet a girl for the first time and they'll just like try and get with them straight away. Mm. And it's just like, it seems a bit like, for a start, it seems a bit over eager, but it's mm. also a bit like, oh, mate, maybe. A bit predatory. A bit like, yeah, chill out. Mm -hmm. You know, like when it's right, I think you know it's right. Yeah, yeah. But you don't yeah. need to force it. For sure. That's what she said. Um, but yeah, you don't need to force it. So it's almost like nice, isn't it? It's like, you know, you make your intentions known to the woman and you pursue the woman. Mm hmm. But then, you know, it's like when the woman almost is like, okay, yeah, we can hold hands now. Mm. I'm your bae. And then you're like, <laughs> then you're like hell yeah, dog. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> hell <right>. yeah, dog. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, okay, some more facts, folks. But just mm. uh, loads of um, fact quick fire facts. Fact after fact after fact. Do you know that blacking out from alcohol doesn't cause you to lose memories, but rather your brain temporarily loses the ability to transfer new memories from short-term to long-term storage? Damn. Hmm. Do you lose memories when you drink? I can't remember. If I ever drink, it's all gone. Really? All gone. 100%. I wake up and that's why I like, that's almost why I hate drinking now. Yeah. It's that I wake up and my instant thought is, I have no clue what happened yesterday. I've really? Got, yeah, it's just, it's just gone. I mean, there's definitely obviously been times in my life um, where, yeah, I can't remember what happened in a night mm. because of how drunk I got. But on the whole, I wouldn't say it affects me that badly. Mm. Like I, even to this day, I have random glimpses of like obviously I can't remember the exact day, like what happened that day or what yeah, happened yeah, that yeah. evening. But I have like glimpses in my head of like walking back to my grandparents' house from town, mm. like white boy wasted, mm. like walking down by um you know you know like by the Quantock Gateway, there's that little lane mm -hmm. that takes you alongside the cemetery, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you end up yeah. in that little housing estate that basically almost like links up with Chilton. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I would walk down there all the time because it's like a shortcut. It's mm. like the quickest way to get from town to Wemden. Um, that's where my, my grandparents live. Um, and I have like memories of walking down there at like, n at like night and like seeing like the street lamp, which is like halfway down the lane and almost like bouncing off the walls. <laughs> but like I have that memory mm. like now and I must have been like 16, 17. I was saying this to my friend the other day because we were talking about anxiety, which is obviously like a thing which people get, you know. Drew after, gets it really I bad. Get it really Drew gets bad. really emotional. Yeah. Honestly, I get it really we'll have to, we'll have to add, we used to, but we'll yeah, have to talk weird. to him about it next week. Because um, oh yeah, just to let everyone know, Drew mm. Bear has been found. He has. He didn't die <laughs> in the um, Amazon. Um, he was found in the jungles of Costa mm. Rica, and he's going to be returned to us next week. So Drew Bear will be back next week, everyone. Um, so don't don't God worry. Bless. God but bless. But yeah, Drew has told me, and I've sort of seen it firsthand. He gets really emotional when he's hungover. Mm. I've watched movies before with Drew, like after like a night out, and say I'll stay at his. Well, I'll wake up and watch a movie and there'll be like an emotional part of the movie and I'll look over and Drew's like crying. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, it's a pretty emotional part of the movie, but like I can like keep it together. You mm. know? 
And Drew would just be like, like tears, like streaming down. He's like, mate, I'm really emotional. It's because I'm hungover. Yeah. No, I can relate to that. I can yeah. definitely relate to that. But I think as well, I, I, I get like anxiety. Mm. And I think it comes with that same thing of losing like your memory. Because I'll even if I have like two drinks, really? um, I'll just like forget what I was doing during that That's time. That's crazy, man. But it's almost like the things, I'll remember little bits, but mm. I think it's almost like my brain will switch on if something happens, uh, you know, when you drink and like so an occasion might happen, you go, oh, that's a bit crazy. Mm. But because you're drunk, you almost be like, I need to remember that. Yeah. So sure, then when sure. I do wake up, my night will just be completely like complete blackout moments of like, I've got no clue what happened, even though I would have been like, you know, In all there at the yeah. time. And then I'll just the only bits that I will remember are the little bits where I went. Well, that's a bit mental. Or like yeah. if there's like a fight in front of you or like an argument. Mm. So then my memory will always just be. Oh right! It seems like everyone's just always fighting whenever, whenever we go. Oh. But I don't think that's actually the case. No. I just think that's the only bit that my brain will like switch on to be like, remember this, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think I mean it's a common thing anyway, isn't it? That they say like, unfortunately, something about the human brain is you're more likely to remember negative mm. stuff than positive stuff, which is yeah, a real shame, sure. isn't it? Yeah. But like, yeah, you, I can see why you'd be more likely to remember like a big fight mm. on a night out than necessarily like. A moment where yeah, everyone was like, like dancing, oh. and yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. On this theme, though, mm. on the alcohol theme, do you know that the world's strongest beer is called the End of History, oh. and it has an astonishing alcohol content of fifty-five percent. Damn, that's a strong that's like, beer. That's like fifteen percent stronger than whiskey. That's and it's crazy. A beer. The beer is produced by a Scottish, of course, brewery mm -hmm. called Brewdog, famous, famous yep. bre yeah, brewery, yeah, yeah. and is made using a freezing process that removes water from the beer, leaving only the alcohol and flavour. Interesting, mm. isn't it? I wonder how that would taste. Yeah. Like if it would actually taste like beer or just like a spirit. I want to try it. Mm. I mean, it's not like, I know, it's not like, <gasps> yeah, it's not going to kill you. Know you. I, mean? Like, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I like whiskey and I drink whiskey. I don't drink it like often because mm. I'm not, because I don't drink often, to be honest. I only drink like socially, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, and most of the time I'm just too busy, just like wanting to, spend time with my daughter and like work out and stuff mm. and all that wholesome stuff yeah do you know what I mean so oh, I'd, good I'd, stuff. yeah I'd rather do that than just sit around drinking or go to the pub to be honest mm -hmm. but um yeah I'd like to I'd definitely like to try it see, mm. let's see if we can get our hands on it shall we the mm. end of history I mean if it's history. from Scotland 100% we can order something yeah. it's not like it's from the other side of the world that sounds cool yeah this is an interesting fact do you know the alcohol content in some fruits can be surprisingly high for example a single apple can contain up to 0.5% alcohol and some ripe bananas can contain up to 0.4% alcohol. However, the amount of alcohol in these fruits is generally not enough to cause intoxication. But theoretically, if you ate enough, you could get drunk. Isn't it tomatoes as well that have like a real strong I don't know, man. Presence? I've, I remember I've never heard that. Someone no. about, I think it's tomatoes, hmm. where it's like you would actually think it would be able hmm. to get you drunk. But because obviously it's so liquidy you're like hydrating yourself at the same time so it just like yeah. cancels it out yeah i mean i've heard that there's that old um wife's tale isn't there that um you know like if you if you um drink a water between the drink no i just had a weird blackout then no i was gonna say <laughs> if you uh, like, don't drink coffee if you're dehydrated because the ah, coffee right. will make you more dehydrated um and apparently that's almost like an old wife's tale as well because it's like it uh, coffee does technically dehydrate you, mm. but obviously because you're taking it in a liquid bever beverage, mm -hmm. apparently like, say you took in like a mug, for anyone that doesn't know what a mug is, <laughs> a mug. There you go. Of coffee, you would only dehydrate, the caffeine would dehydrate like a drop. Right, right, right. So you're taking in like, how many drops of water do you reckon are in a mug? What, like a thousand? More than one. <laughs> yeah, a thousand, like yeah. say a five, that, who knows, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that's an interesting science question. How many drops mm. of liquid are in a, a, a the average out. mug? Yeah, but let's say you know anywhere between I reckon like a thousand, five thousand. I might yeah. be wildly off. There it might, might be, be ten like, thousand. Yeah, who be, knows? Who knows? I reckon it's more than a thousand. But if it's if you're only dehydrating like one drop, then mm. obviously you're still getting way more hydrated having the coffee. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. we will leave it on that, folks. We will leave it on that mm -hmm. groundbreaking and astonishing revelation. There we go. You've been listening to Pandora's Box. Thanks for chilling with us this evening, folks. We love you. Uh, I've been Obadiah Penny Whistle, and this young lad to the right of me has been Bullwinkle. the mayor of Winkletown. All right. Cheers, folks. Have a good week. We'll see you next time. Peace.